Hello, my name is Steve Tegler, and this is Document Understanding, How It Works. For this conversation, we'll discuss uh, a couple of different types of documents, structured and semi-structured. And when you think about what a structured document is, a structured document is a document that doesn't really change. It is highly predictable in terms of its layout and the data that you want to extract from that particular document. So you can think of like some sort of application or a request form, maybe a tax form. These have a lot of consistency in terms of the layout. Semi-structured are more variable in nature in terms of their layout. So common data to extract and data fields, but they're highly variable. And historically, these have been very difficult to handle given the large amount of variations that could potentially be seen. Of course, good examples here are invoices and POs. They both, they come from different companies and they're highly variable in terms of their layouts. Our blank canvas here to create this uh, process is uh, within the UiPath Studio. And the first thing we'll want to define is where are the documents coming in? In this case, we're showing an email inbox. Um, certainly it could be some sort of folder somewhere or a system with a queue. Because of the UiPath ecosystem, we have a lot of flexibility to grab that document at its first touch point into your business. In the case of an email inbox, there's also some variability there. Maybe it comes in, maybe the document comes in as an attachment. Maybe it's a part of the body of the email. Maybe it's a URL and you actually have to click, click and download the document from a, a exterior location. Of course, fax scanning systems and, and other uh, systems can also be uh, used as that initial touch point of the document. When we think about the first document processing portion, of this studio process, it first starts with OCR. And OCR means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But in the case of UiPath, when we think about OCR, um, it's really just about extracting the text and the metadata associated with the text. So these are things like coordinates of the text, page breaks, and other unique uh, descriptors of the text and where it is. So that is OCR. So we've uh, sent our receipt request form. We've extracted it from an email. It's now sitting in OCR. It's being read. And our first decision in the process is around the split and the classify. So these are two separate steps. We typically bundle them uh, together for simplicity. The split functionality means if a file comes in and it has a receipt request, a PO, and an invoice, we will be able to split that one, that single file into three different files. And so it allows greater handling of large variations of how those uh, documents come in. That's the split. Classify merely looks um, at the document itself in a very simple way and figures out what it is. Is it a receipt request, a PO or an invoice? And so the classify stage, once it's classified, we understand what it is, we can forward it to the optimum extraction method. So depending on the document type, structured and semi-structured, we will want to provide a different extraction method. So here our form is uh, didn't need to be split. It turns out it is a form, so it goes to our form-based extractor. Form-based extractor is a very simple template-based approach to extracting data from documents. We'll get to machine learning in a minute. So once we have extracted the data from the fields that we've defined, we then send that data, so it's no longer a document, it's the actual data that's important to us, to post-processing and business rules. And really what this is, is uh, our ability to look at the data that's extracted and actually perform some simple logic on it. And by logic, we mean we can do math. If there's numbers, we can add things up, make sure the extracted data um, actually calculates out to be correct. We can perform some rules like do fields follow certain formats, have certain characters, or more powerful even is matching the data that was extracted to a system of record. Did that PO already exist in the ERP system? What about the invoice number? Is the address correct? Do I need to verify that in not only my own system, but maybe an external system? So in post-processing and business rules, the, there, there are limitless possibilities in terms of what you can define there. 
And typically our COEs work with their business counterparts um, in the departments that are, are having to process these documents manually today, and they're figuring out what these post-processing and business rules should be. Now, if everything checks out in those post-processing and business rules, and, we're, and the system uh, definition says the data is good to go, we can do some automated data entry. And this process of not touching this document from inbox first touch point to where that data will reside, we call that straight through processing. And one, not the only, but one of the metrics we look at when we look at a successful system is what is the straight through processing rate? Now, let's get into the fun documents, the semi-structured documents, those that have historically been difficult to uh, process because they are highly variable in nature. So in this case, let's start off with an invoice. And of course, we read it with OCR, we look at the text, we understand a little bit about it. We then see it's an invo invoice at the classify step and we send it to the machine learning extractor. Now, normally the UiPath Studio uh, process defines what the robot will be doing. Now, in this case, because it's machine learning, we have a, a hosted skill, so an ML skill, we call it. And so we actually send that uh, invoice, in this case, over to the ML skill, and we run it through our machine learning model for invoices, and we extract the data. So this happens, uh, for the most part, externally from the UiPath Studio process. Now, where is this ML skill? Well, typically, it resides in a technology we call AI Center. An AI center is our life cycle management for our machine learning models. And if we want to crack open the covers a little bit more behind what's behind that machine learning skill, we have this thing called a machine learning package. And so we have the logic for the document understanding machine learning model. We have the schema, meaning which fields will I want to extract? And then the ever important training data. The training data is how we actually teach this model to read semi-structured documents. Let's get back to the process. So after we receive the data from the ML skill, we're going to apply those same post-processing and business rules. Now, in this example, I'm illustrating that for some reason, those post-processing and business rules fail. And so in this case, we want to trigger human in the loop. And what we'll do is we'll sit this in a queue and we'll wait, we'll notify um, a named individual and they will come in and they will have to look at the document and the data was extracted and reconcile differences. Now, when it's sitting in this queue, we can still continue to process any type of document, more receipt requests, more POs, more invoices, they can flow through the system uh, freely. Now, once the uh, human has come in and validated that invoice data, then we, of course, will send that data automatically into that system of record, in this case, an ERP. But we will also do one very special thing. We will capture those changes in a bucket called our validated data. And what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to take that validated data, we'll take those lessons learned or those teachings, and we will then where we can apply that to the training data for the machine learning package. So this gives us a continuous training loop if we so desire. This concludes our discussion of document understanding how it works. We hope you found this beneficial and can certainly reach out to your UiPath representatives and get further information on any one of these steps and capabilities of the solution. Thank you.